since it's the weekend, I really like to explore the city. And even though it's Ramadan, I still want to go out and explore. So today we're heading out to the Bukchon Hanok village, and I'm excited to see what they have today. South Korea has an advanced transport network consisting of high-speed railways, highways, bus routes, ferry services, and air routes that crisscross the whole country. The Corail also provides frequent train services to all major South Korean cities, including Seoul, Busan, Incheon, Daegu, Daejeon, and Gwangju. The Seoul subway is so convenient getting around Korea, especially as a single woman. You don't need a car, don't have to worry about safety. It's very easy to get to a lot of tourist destinations with the subway. I'm so excited. Let's go. Bukchon Hanok Village is situated between Gyeongbokgung Palace and Changdokgung Palace, and its streets are lined with the Korean traditional houses called Hanok. Unlike other folk villages, Bukchon Hanok Village was not built to be a tourist attraction. This residential neighborhood is actually home to many common Sulites. The best place within Bukchon to experience the old Hanok atmosphere may be Gaiho Dong, where hundreds of Hanoks sit shoulder to shoulder. Every nook in this village has many traces of history for locals and visitors to rediscover their historical heritage. So even during Ramadan, we still have to make sure to make our prayers. And when you come to a tourist area, it can be a bit tricky, but I found a quiet alley, so I'm gonna pray here. The Zahor, or noon prayer, is the prayer after midday. It has been said that the name Doho was given to this prayer because it falls halfway between two daily prayers, those being Faj, which denotes the beginning of dawn, and Isha, the first instant of complete darkness. Performed daily by practicing Muslims, it is the second of the five daily prayers. The Islamic day begins at Faj, which is the first prayer. The five daily prayers collectively are one of the five pillars of Islam. It is reduced to two rak'at when traveling. In recent years, the old charms of traditional Hanok have transformed into many recently opened galleries, craft workshops, and restaurants. A new kind of Hanok culture is developing in Bukchung Hanok village. This is my favorite place to come and relax and explore in Seoul. You're on your own schedule, you can take your time looking around, so I highly recommend this area if you're looking for a leisure experience. In Sedong is a dong, or neighborhood of the Jonogu district in the South Korean city of Seoul. The main street called Insedong Gil is well known as a traditional street to both locals and foreigners and represents the culture of the past and the present. Opened in 2004, Samigil is a prominent destination in Insedong. It is a shopping mall that comprises many specialty stores of handicrafts. It also has many workshops to maintain and continue the traditional arts of handicraft making. Its large collections of handmade items best exemplifies its former glory as a unique area of Seoul that truly represents the cultural history of the nation. We're now in an area of Seoul known as Insedong. It's known for hosting traditional restaurants, souvenir shops, as well as tea houses. Most souvenir shops have set prices, but if you tend to buy a lot of things, you might be able to get a bargain with one of the owners. Speaking of a bargain, I need to buy souvenirs for my family, so let's go shopping. Ooh. My sister said she wanted some pencil cases, but it's kind of hard to choose. I think I'll go with these two. For Iman, 
Ramadan is not only the period to perform her duties oh, as a Muslim, but also a time for her to maintain and nurture her ties with fellow Muslim friends, especially when they are all spending the holy month in a foreign country. Iman often visits the Seoul Central Mosque where she has made a lot of friends with fellow Muslims. So I actually first visited the Seoul Central Mosque in 2012 and that's when I was in Korea for the first time and I wanted to visit the mosque for sure. I had no idea that um, Korea even had a masjid, especially in Seoul. So it was really nice to visit and I actually met a lot of friends at that mosque and it was just a really good experience and um, really getting to see the atmosphere and comparing it to back home. A memorable event that I had at the masjid was when we had a fundraiser for um, a girl who had come to Korea for treatment. And that was the first time that I was involved in helping like translate for the advertising and just to get the word out and spread awareness for her. And one of the main events that they had at the mosque, and they actually had a few of them, was to raise money for her treatment because every day that she was in the hospital, the family was accumulating a lot of costs. So we went to visit her mother in the hospital and at the masjid, once we had the fundraiser, we had different sections for like food that people could purchase or get henna on their, you know, on their hands and little, just little trinkets that they could buy. And that money would go towards treating um, the girl. And it was just really nice to see people come together and willing to give back, even if they didn't know who she was. So that was really nice and a very memorable um, event for me at the mosque. We will join Iman at her iftar dinner with her fellow Muslim friends and share their experience observing Ramadan in Seoul. Did you guys wait too long? Yeah, no, no, no. Okay, let's, let's go, go eat. Let's go eat. <laughs> 